It's time for the major news on The Bridge 99 FM. The headlines. Opposition leader reassigns members. Extensive drain cleaning exercise in KSAMC. SLB redesigns website. In regional news, Cuba's sugar production in crisis. And in international news, Toronto Police Department apologizes for mistreatment of minorities. In sports, McLeod headlines Jamaicans to compete at Oslo Diamond League and Inter Milan hopeful for Lukaku's return this season. In entertainment, Netflix announces return of hit series Squid Game. Bridge Nation, I'm Lafayne Wigan and now the details. We begin with local news. Mayor of Kingston, Delroy Williams, said the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, KCMC, is undertaking a $100 million drain cleaning exercise in the next two weeks. Mr. Williams said critical coastal drains will be given priority. The cleaning is in preparation for the annual Atlantic hurricane season, which runs from June 1 through to November 30. The U.S. Hurricane Center predicted a more than usual active hurricane season this year. According to Mayor Williams, the drain cleaning exercise will continue throughout the hurricane season. He said that although the country has been spared from any major storm events in recent years, Climate change and its associated impacts are already affecting small island states. Opposition leader Mark Golding has revised his shadow cabinet with the return of Natalie Nita Garvey. The inclusion of Mrs. Nita Garvey as the Member of Parliament for St. Catherine North Central is believed to be an effort to mend the fallout over the election loss in 2020 and repair internal conflicts. The former cabinet minister is now the spokesperson on local government, community development and sports, as well as Deputy Leader of Opposition Business in the House. Senator Damien Crawford is now assigned to Education, Training and Competitiveness. Senator Damien Crawford is now assigned to Education, Training and Competitiveness, taking over from Dr. Angela Brown-Burke, who is now at Labor and Social Security under the new changes. Mr. Crawford was previously assigned to Entertainment and Culture. Other changes include Philip Paulwell returning as Leader of Opposition Business in the House of Representatives, replacing Anthony Hilton. The changes are coming months before the party's annual conference in September, where the PNP president is seeking to project greater levels of unity. Customers of the Student Loans Bureau SLB now have easier access to SLB services with the launch of the entity's redesigned website. Deputy Executive Director at the SLB, Charmaine Rose Anderson, explains the institution decided to redesign its website after receiving feedback from its customers. Mrs. Rose Anderson said the website will be more user-friendly for new loan applicants, noting it has more instructions regarding the application process, requirements and documentation for customers and guarantors. She explains the website assists new customers with information before they start the loan application process, the documents that are needed, the requirements for the guarantors, and what to expect after submitting the application. The Deputy Executive Director of the SLB said visitors will also have access to information on additional services of the SLB, including the loan amount, interest rates, and tenure. And in regional news, Cuban authorities have disclosed that the sugar industry is currently facing a crisis. The agricultural sector has revealed it missed its target with only half the sugar being produced for this season. The authorities acknowledged that while they will cover internal demands, they will not be able to meet their international commitments. The target was to produce 911,000 tons of sugar, but only about 482,000 tons was produced. The reasons for this season's low production include a shortage of herbicides and fertilizers, a delay in starting up sugar mills and even a lack of oxygen, which is hoarded by the health sector to combat COVID-19, and a lack of fuel and spare tires due to U.S. sanctions. Finally, in international news, a report has found that black people are two times more likely to have an interaction with Toronto, Canada police. The report from Canada's largest municipal force confirmed long-standing concerns that people of color are disproportionately targeted by police. The statistics were drawn from 949 use of force incidents and 7,114 strip searches by Toronto police in 2020. 
The report found that Black, Indigenous, Middle Eastern, and Asian Torontonians were overrepresented in both use of force incidents and strip searches relative to their total population in the Canadian city. Police were also inclined to use a higher degree of force against those residents compared to white people, especially when it came to drawing firearms. Black, South Asian, and East South Asian people were much more likely to have an officer point a firearm at them during a police interaction, whether they were perceived as armed or unarmed. Police Chief James Raymer on Wednesday apologized for the discrimination by the evidence of biased policing. Chief Raymer admitted there is systematic discrimination in policing in the city. It's now time for sports and entertainment news with Vaughn. Hey Bridge Nation, I am Vaughn Thorpe with your sports and entertainment news 360. Olympic 110-meter hurdles champion Omar McLeod is one of four Jamaicans set to compete at the Oslo Diamond League meeting today, June 16. McLeod is scheduled to square off against Devon Allen of America, who clocked 12.84 seconds to record the third fastest time in history in New York on Sunday, June 12. Olympic 400 meters finalist Christopher Taylor will also be in action when he lines up against two-time Olympic champion Kirani James of Grenada and Olympic mile relay silver medalist Limarvin Bonavassia of the Netherlands. Meanwhile, Natalia Gould, who holds the national record in the 800 meters, will grace the track in the event while World Championship silver medalist Daniel Thomas Dodd will contest the shot put. And the Serie A side Inter Milan is hoping to secure the return of Belgium striker Remelu Lukaku from Chelsea. Lukaku returned to Chelsea in August last year on a £97.5 million loan from Inter Milan. However, the Belgium international Lukaku has indicated that he wishes to take a hefty wage cut to return to Inter Milan after a difficult season with the Blues. During his time at Stamford Bridge, Lukaku scored 15 goals in all competitions for Chelsea, with 8 goals scored in 26 Premier League appearances. And in entertainment news, fans are excited as Netflix's hit series Squid Game is officially set to return. The widely popular South Korean show has been given the green light for a second season after show producers confirmed last year that they were open to another season. Squid Game is a fictional drama in which contestants who are desperately in need of money play children's games with a deadly spin to win cash prizes. The show was the streaming network's biggest ever series launch and is the platform's first ever Korean series to reach number one in the United States. And that's it for Sports and Entertainment News 360. Back to you, LaFame. Thanks, Vaughn. And that was The Bridge 99 FM and Ari Jam Radio News Package. News 360, the facts you need. Catch us at 5 p.m. for another News 360. You can also download the Bridge 99FM app in the Google Play Store and the Apple Store for all the latest happenings on the Bridge. I'm Lafayne Wigan. Have a great day. And those are the stories making it in Bridge 99FM's major news package right here on the Bridge 99FM.